Hey, what's going on, family? Um, today I want to talk about voting and why are black people voting? Because to me, it makes no sense, and I'm gonna dive into why. Okay, first of all, why am I talking about black people in particular and why black people are voting? First of all, let's look at some of the things that black people are experiencing in this country. Um, mass incarceration, which has been uh, shown to be racially disparate. Um, the the black white wealth gap. The school to prison pipeline, miseducation pipeline. Um, the unemployment rate for black people is higher than the national average. Uh, these are just a few cursory things that black people are experiencing in this country especially now unless you're a racist and you believe that black people are just somehow genetically inferior uh, and that's why we have less money than white people that's why we're going to jail more than white people and other races just in general our, our stats are higher than everybody and that includes what you would what you would call asians or or latinos white latinos to be specific because um black hispanic and latinos are black people whether they want to admit it or not um, if you're if you're of melanated hue and uh, afrocoid features you're a black person uh, in this country I don't, I don't give a damn whether you identify as um, Latino or not uh, so black people have it the worst in this country and other constituencies and let's also not act like it's a bad thing to uh, look out for yourself women have um, and to, to be frank and I can go in on this in other videos but w women which is white women have coalitions for themselves Hispanics have coalitions for themselves um, Jews have coalitions for themselves. Native Americans have coalitions for themselves. So there, there is nothing wrong with black people looking out for black people, especially given that black people have been specifically harmed in this country. Like I said, we don't have to go back to the history of slavery and Jim Crow. We can go to right now. We can look at like I just mentioned at the beginning of this statement, at the beginning of this video, mass incarceration, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So black people have to look out specifically for themselves. And that goes to the topic of the video. Why are black people voting when none of these candidates, not Hillary Clinton, not Bernie Sanders, not Donald Trump, has promised anything specifically for black people? anything tangible and I'm gonna break down why each of these candidates are problematic and if every candidate is problematic and I'm gonna break down the system and how it in itself is problematic so it's gonna just lead to the question of why the hell are we even engaging in this process? It seems like we're wasting our time. It's like you're taking a placebo that's every that the dominant society or everyone around you is telling you that it's real, but you know it's a placebo, but you keep on taking it because everybody's doing it. It's like, you know, if everybody jumped that old saying, if everybody jumps off a bridge, would you? Well, that's what black people are doing because everybody else is jumping off the bridge because every other race is jumping off the bridge. We're jumping off the bridge, but to be honest, that's not a good analogy because other races are getting things for their vote. We're not. Let's go to our first black president, President Obama. He has either enacted physical, taking physical political action, or at the very least spoken for in support of physical political action for just about every other community besides black people he has granted all kinds of amnesties and mini amnesties to the latino community he has cut their unemployment 
in half while black people's unemployment has not budged. And some studies say that they've gone up. Black unemployment has gone up since President Obama has become president. Police brutality has been ramped up since black people, since President Obama has become president. Nothing in the condition of black people has improved. That's why if you go to President Obama's website and like I said, I, you can check everything or like I used to say um, on my old videos that I deleted. You can check everything I say. You can go research it to, to, and call me out if I'm lying or I'm factual. But you can go to President Obama's website and you can go go look where he talks about what he's done for Hispanics. He has tangible stats on how things has improved for Hispanics under his administration. When it's black people, all he can all he said is, oh, I've set aside all this money for for all these things. Or he talks about. Well, I've 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 I've, I've enacted these prison uh, reforms or I've enacted these uh, housing reforms, but they don't talk about how they have or how they will specifically help black people. You have to read between the lines. Not one of his proposals on his website talk about that's listed under the specific section for black people list how anything that he's proposing or any other so-called money that he set aside under the section for black people is actually going to do anything for black people women the very first act he signed was the lily ledbetter act for feminists and women he's spoken in support of israel and the jews he's worn that freaking jew um uh uh whatever that thing is that that little small hat that they wear uh you know he's shown support for jewish americans and the jewish community you know of course their their israel uh their you know nation state over there but basically barack obama has done nothing for black people and most black people know this by now some are still delusional and still think he's some Martin Luther King figure, but he's done nothing for black people. Now, let's break down each of the candidates. Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a is a white supremacist. He's he's a I don't, I'm not going to debate you on that. If you don't believe Donald Trump is a white supremacist, you're naive in denial. Or lying. Th th that's the only three options. You're lying. You know he's a white supremacist, but you're denying it because you're a liar. You're in denial, which means you kind of know, but you don't want to accept it. Or you're just naive and you really are don't have the intellect and racial awareness that you need to be aware of a white supremacist when you see one that's not calling you nigger. You have to be aware of coded white supremacy. And you're not you're you're completely oblivious to it. Also, if you're aware of the hierarchy of white supremacy and how they don't treat everybody that's not white the same, there's a hierarchy. There's like a, a ranking system and black people are at the bottom. It's different degrees of of abuse, so so to speak. Um, and, and black people get the worst of it. That's why statistically we're affected. And Latinos and Hispanic people are the second most affected by white supremacy. And then you go to maybe a Arabic Middle Eastern people uh, that are not black. I'm talking about lighter skin and maybe kind of tannish brown, brown skin uh, Hispanic people. And then Asians and then white people are at the top. So... Black people have been are at the bot. So oh, I lost my train, my train of thought. Sorry, I had a brain fart there. Um, so if the president is saying these kind of things about Hispanic people, some of the racist things that he said, what do you think he thinks about black people? Like, really, like, let's be real with ourselves. So Donald Trump is a white supremacist this that's not up for debate that's not up for discussion um like i said if you're if you want to debate this you're in denial and that's that's where we're at with you as a person
whoever you are that's out here supporting Donald Trump as a black person. Now, Hillary Clinton, uh, Michelle Alexander wrote a great piece on how Hillary Clinton has been our how Bill Clinton was extremely damaging to black people as a president, how she pushed all these racist policies that I just talked about at the beginning of the video, the mass incarceration, the war on drugs. She perpetuated these and made them even worse, turned them up, made them even worse. So at a time when black people maybe things could have started to turn around for us or not i may maybe just not continue to not get uh get worse for us the clintons made sure they got worse and uh michelle alexander writes a great piece on that so and then not only that if you look at some of her overseas policies like you know how the clintons handled uh um or how Bill Clinton handled Haiti during his presidency um, and how he perpetuated some of the other things that were going on in Africa. So it's not just lo uh, you know, nationally or locally in America that, sh that the Clinton presidency perpetuated white supremacy. They perpetuated white supremacy globally. Um, there were some Haitian people that uh, went to um, some kind of Clinton donor thing or something like that in New York. It was about a year or two ago. And they were protesting Hillary Clinton because of this, the, the fuckery that she's done or that they have done via their foundation uh, in Haiti. And then when you go back to their presidency, you know, the, you know, having a part in putting in puppet dictatorships um, and dismantling the economy of Haiti. This, you know, these are race. This is uh this is someone who's who's been abusive to to black people in general. And like I said, Hillary Clinton, you want to say, oh, well, that was Bill. Hillary Clinton did her part. You know, she was out here talking about that super predator uh, BS, pushing that propaganda about black men. Uh, you know, back when Bill was president, so she was out there doing her part. So it's been well established if you do your research why Hillary Clinton does not deserve the black vote. Now, Bernie Sanders, this seems to be black people's new favorite candidate. And a lot of white people are vote are supporting uh, Bernie too. But I'm talking about black people. This seems to be their new favorite candidate. But Bernie Sanders does not support reparations. Now, neither does Trump or Hillary Clinton. But I've already established why they are have a, a white supremacist history i think most people are aware that that's not even in the question for them to support reparations so they're not getting as much pressure as bernie sanders but bernie sanders is supposed to be different because he's supposed to be a socialist he's supposed to be a radical but when it comes to do something radical for black people it's like whoa 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 whoa, whoa now that's too divisive but jewish reparations are not divisive and the jewish holocaust which is the worst thing that they've gone through did not even happen in this country. And that's really what we're paying reparations to them for. And reparations to, to Israel, billions and billions of dollars in aid to Israel. And it's become this almost um, across both parties, it's become this non-debatable issue to support Israel. Now, Bernie Sanders supports Israel, but he's supposed to be different. Now, most of the people I see, you know, that considered are a lot of the people I see that are supporting Bernie have stuff like Free Palestine on their Twitters and their Facebooks. But you're supporting Bernie Sanders, who does not want to free Palestine. So how radical is Bernie Sanders really? And the other thing I say is if Bernie Sanders was truly a radical, he would vote. He would run third party. He would run outside of the Democrat and Republican establishment because that's the other thing that I wanted to get on in this video is what, there is too much diversity of, of ideas in this country for there to only be two parties that have supposedly, quote unquote, a chance of making um, of becoming the president. Other countries have a. Uh, party pl uh, plural uh, uh, fat tongue there uh, 
they have party parity. Meaning that they have several parties that could make the presidency. They don't have two choices. I saw a meme that was funny and it says, you know, every year North Korea holds elections, but only one candidate gets the ballot. And then it shows a picture of a group of sheep saying, you know, everyone knows that uh, in a real election, you get two choices instead of one choice. Now, me, I voted after voting for President Obama in 2008. You know, I at that point, I realized that President Obama wasn't going to do shit for black people. I didn't vote. Go back and vote for him in, in 2012. And I did vote again. I just didn't vote for him and I didn't vote for Romney either. I voted for. Uh, I voted third party. I voted for the libertarian candidate. Um, and I'm his name slipping my mind right now, but I voted for the guy who voted ran actually on the libertarian ticket, not ran uh, Ryan Paul. I voted for the when it came down to the people who finally made who actually made the ticket. I voted for the libertarian candidate. I forget his name. He used to be the governor of New Mexico. But. Again, back to Sanders, if Sanders was truly some kind of radical and not in the system, why isn't he voting third party, especially when everybody's putting out articles, how the Democratic Party is attacking him and the Democratic elites are attacking him? To me, this is a, a smokescreen because they're going to allow they're going to allow Bernie to be president. That's what I'm saying right now. I'm saying they're going to allow Bernie to be president of the United States, him or Trump. I don't see Hillary Clinton. I think the elites that run the elections know that it's too implausible for hillary clinton i think they might still be putting her out there just in case they can push her forward but i think they kind of know it's not really practical for uh hillary to be president too many people are, are waking up to her and that's white and black people so i think they kind of know that that's out the picture but they want they want the people to think that they have a choice or that that they are controlling who's getting uh in office and bernie sanders they need to present Bernie Sanders as the anti-establishment candidate because that's why people are voting against Hillary Clinton. Because even this, you know, minus the racist stuff for white people, for example, they kind of know that this Democrat Republican shit is bullshit. That's why they're, you know, fed up with because you if you remember a couple of years ago when people were first kind of starting to, to discuss 2016. The first thing that the media was putting out there was, oh, it's going to be Bush Clinton. The people, you know, the people started rising up on the Internet because the Internet is a good thing for the elites now because now they're getting to see what public sentiment is. They're getting to get a really good. They're getting a lot better picture of how people are feeling and what people are thinking. And when they first put out that Jeb, uh, that Bush Clinton bullshit, people were like, OK, this is some fuckery. Something's not right here. We we're not going to keep, you know, voting for these same same dynasties. This is America is supposed to be a democracy. We're not going to put in royal dynasties um, in office who says who that is going to be Bush and Clinton. So once people started started pushing back against that, they were like, OK, we need to find alternative candidates. We're still going to control them, but we need to find alternative candidates. So. I feel, like I said, I feel like Bernie is an established because if he was truly anti-establishment, he would run third party. He would not run under this two party puppet system, especially when you claim to be a socialist. If you're a socialist, they run as a damn socialist. They're just like and I say the same thing to Rand Paul and Ron Paul. If you're a libertarian, run as a damn libertarian. Stop running as one of the two um, parties that you're, quote unquote, supposed to run, because if your campaign is truly genuine, Run as what you are. Don't run as a Democrat. Don't run as a liberal. Then Bernie Sanders is calling his himself a socialist, but clearly this is in name only because he's running as a Democrat under the Democratic ticket when there's a socialist party in this country. So, like I said, black people, all of this, we're going to do something for everybody else and it'll help you. Nobody else accepts that. None of these candidates can go to the Hispanic community and say, we're going to help everybody and it'll help you, too. Then they can't go to women and say, we're going to help everybody and it'll help you, too. They'll say, no. There has been there's a specific issue 
that women have, for example, that women have the, the pay issue, they're not going to accept. Well, we're going to help everybody and it'll help women too. Hispanics with the immigration, they're not going to, are, are their economics too, because I don't want to stereotype them and say the only thing they're worried about is, is immigration because there's plenty of Latino and Hispanic citizens in this nation. But regardless, they're not going to say to them, well, we're going to help everybody and they'll help you too. Nobody else accepts that but black people. And Bernie Sanders kind of tried that with us. Well, we're going to do all these socialist things for the working class. And of course, black people are part of the working class, so it'll help you too. No. If that's the case, stop this, these uh, set-asides for Jewish people. Stop all these other set-asides and just do things and, and give reparations or just, just stop them. Because that's special for a special group of people when clearly you allegedly have a problem with special groups of people getting things or you only have a problem with special groups of people getting things when it's black people because you're a racist white supremacist. So again, black people, why are you voting? This and that's kind of I know I kind of went on some other things, but that's what I want to talk about, how this whole voting thing is a sham and it's a scam. Because if we truly had a choice, we would have more than two choices because there's too much diversity in this nation for there to only be too too many too much diversity of ideas in this nation. For there to only be two candidates and people say, well, no candidate is going to be perfect. And, and uh, oh, yeah, let me say to that. No candidate is going to be perfect. No, no candidate is going to be perfect. But there are candidates that are closer to perfect than the ones that they're presenting to you. For example, Jill Stein, the, the Green Party candidate, she supports reparations for black people. But nobody's even talking about her. She's not even mentioned. Why? Because she, quote unquote, has no chance says who of course she has no chance if you don't vote for her that's common sense so why doesn't she have a chance other than the fact that you're not going to vote for her and she has policies that are more favorable and she's anti-israel she has more policies that are that agree because people they have to come up with all these compromises to end up you know, when you call them out, especially most people who are calling themselves socialists, they have to come up with all these compromises. Why Bernie is is not perfect, but he's the best. Well, OK, Jill Stein might not be perfect, but, she, but she's more perfect to these so-called socialist people and black people. She's more closely aligned with us than Bernie. So why aren't we talking about her? Why isn't she even part of the conversation? Why? Because the elites have told you and drilled into your head that a candidate has no chance. But a candidate only has no chance if the people give them no chance. And why aren't the people giving them a chance? Because the people have convinced themselves that only a Democrat and only a Republican have a quote unquote chance at winning the election. And again, I ask you, why is it that they are the only ones that have a chance? Says who? Says who? If the people are truly choosing the candidate, anybody from the street should be able to have a chance. Why is it that only someone that runs by, for a Democrat and a Republican has a quote unquote chance? That makes no sense to me. Especially, like I said, when you can look up the Green Party, the Socialist Party. If, if you have more conservative leanings, the Libertarian Party, there are all these parties out there that are a lot closer to the average person's desires for this government than the quote unquote Democrats and Republicans. Well, you know, we can't get a perfect candidate. Of course we can't. But like I said, we can get a more perfect candidate. Just like Trump isn't perfect. Let's say you're a Bernie supporter. Trump isn't perfect. But Trump is so imperfect that you won't vote for him. Because why? Because there's a more perfect candidate for you to vote for. And that's Bernie Sanders. Yes, Bernie isn't perfect either. But that doesn't mean that you're going to vote for Trump because you know that there's somebody that's better than Trump out there, even if that candidate is imperfect, too. And that's what I'm saying about Bernie. 
Bernie isn't perfect and neither is the person that may be better than him. But the person that's better than them is better than them as far as your ideology and your belief in what you claim to support, like Palestine, like reparations. And like I said, if we are truly, if the people are truly choosing the president, why doesn't someone like Jill Stein have a chance? Says who? Really? Just think about this and use common sense. And this is why I'm going back to voting is a scam. It's a two party dictatorship. It's a false choice. That's why they're only giving you two. And telling you nobody else has a chance says who who's controlling who has a chance and who doesn't. These are the things that we have to think about when we vote. And black people, you're not getting anything for your vote. So stop voting. Plain and simple. I don't know how else to put that. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I want to cover. Oh, yeah. And just the same thing again about this fallacy about, you know, this lesser of two evils. And this is the best I have to choose from. So if the if the elites are the people who, quote unquote, have a chance was Adolf Hitler and Trump, would you say, well, you know, uh, 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 uh um, this ain't who I prefer to choose from, but these are the only people that got a chance because everybody else ain't got no chance. Like, how stupid can you be? All they have to do is put two candidates in front of you and you're going to choose from those two because this is the best you can do. This is the best that that they told you that you can do between freaking Hitler and Stalin, Lucifer and Satan. Well, we can't do no better. And then for all you Bernie Sanders, let's let's say I'm wrong in Bernie Sanders because I think he is going to get the Democratic nomination so that people can continue to to think that they chose the president. Just like once upon a time, it was unthinkable for someone, a black man like Barack Obama to be president. That was seen as um, something that could never happen. But it did. But then it, look at the candidate that he turned out to be. He turned out to be a hypocrite. He turned out to be just like Bush. He went off on, on all that anti-Iraq stuff and then you went or turned around and did the same thing with um, Libya and Syria pushing these um, in, uh, U.S. imperialist agendas you know uh, doing things like the Clintons did and the Bushes did um, backing these terrorist organizations funding these terrorist organizations creating these terrorist organizations just like you know Osama bin Laden used to work for the government against Russia ISIS was created by the government. They create these fake insurgencies so that to, to destabilize an area so that they can move in and, and and take it over or take the resources or take what they want from it. You know? Uh, and then, like I said, just look at his campaign. Look at the, uh, the president's campaign talking about Wall Street and big banks and all that bullshit. And everything that he talked about, it turned out to be lies. And people thought because Barack Obama was a black man and that seemed impractical that we chose him because the because that's what they do. Just like we're burning. They give you a candidate that. Seems like. He wasn't supposed to be chosen so that when he does get chosen, you think you chose him. But you did not but let's say I'm wrong about Bernie Sanders. Let's say that he does. He doesn't get elected. So for all you people that were going so hard on Hillary Clinton, let's say that you that we end up with Trump versus Clinton for the presidency. What are you going to do? Hmm? What are you going to do with all the flaws you found about Hillary Clinton? If she ends up getting a Democratic nomination anyway, are you going to now go out and vote for someone that you were very against? But your own logic says when the people who fight me on the third party thing saying that, quote unquote, you that that candidate has no chance. What are you going to do when a candidate you spend all this time hating on? And are you going to then turn around and vote for that person? Because to stick with your own ideology well, this is the best I can do. This is the best I'm going to get. Well, the best you with the best you're going to get is not good enough. Stop voting because that's telling you that you're that you're not having a say in the situation. 
if I'm telling you that I'm going to serve you a shit sandwich and there's nothing you can do about it, and let's say you've accepted that, the least you can do is not buy the shit sandwich from me, especially if you know I'm going give, to give it to you anyway. That's the same thing with voting. If you know that they're going to give you this candidate anyway, why are you voting? That's that's an open admission that I'm not giving you an option. But I want you to pretend that you have a choice in the matter. It's the same thing. Well, I'm going to give you this shit sandwich anyway, but I want you to buy it from me so that you can uh, feel like you had an, a choice in the matter. And then the whole thing of, well, if you vote third party, you're wasting your vote. OK, so if you vote for Hillary and Trump wins or if you vote for Bernie and Trump wins, let's say Bernie gets a nomination. Does that mean you wasted your vote? If you voted for Romney, did you waste your vote? And remember, these are just from the candidates that, quote unquote, have a chance. So every year, not just people who vote for third party, but every four years. Somebody, quote unquote, waste their vote by that logic. Almost 50 percent of the nation or le obviously less than 50 percent waste their vote or as, for example, in the 2000 campaign, when uh, Bush lost the popular vote and won the general election because you don't choose the candidate, Electoral College, Civics 101, you don't choose the president. And this is an open secret. It's not a secret at all. It's it's, it's known fact. That means that the majority of Americans wasted their vote in the year 2000. So this whole you wasted your vote um logic or or talk is is a bunch of bullshit because anyone who votes for a losing candidate wasted their vote so why are you even going out why go out and vote for bernie if it might end up that you wasted your vote why go out and vote for uh hillary if it ends up that you wasted your vote why go out go out and vote for trump if you if it could possibly end up that you wasted your vote because that candidate lost and like I said, I just reviewed the whole such and such candidate has no chance. People have to think critically and have to think outside the box. And basically what I'm saying to black people and really for I really wish all people in general will stop voting. And here's why I think that not voting is more important, more important than voting. Because. Or if you're going to vote, vote for someone who actually is. Point for point down the line for working class people and people who want revolution here in America and globally like Jill Stein like a real socialist candidate running on the socialist party if you're a libertarian run for someone who's actually running on the libertarian ticket if you must vote but I feel like if you don't vote what it's going to do is it's going to alert the elites that people are kind of waking up that this this is a bunch of bullshit and that's going to scare the shit out of them because the thing that comes once people stop voting it's like when we had no voting like when you have kings and queens and um things like this and unelected leaders what do you see all around through uh the the world and throughout history unelected uh tyrannical leaders getting violently overthrown and i'm not calling for us to 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 go out and kill people but what i'm saying is that when you do that, the fear of that happening, when you don't vote, the fear of that happening goes into the heart of the elites. And they're going to do one of two things. They're going to start giving people what they want. They're going to really, really do some shit for the, the people. Or they're going to let the people choose their own candidate. Either way, it's going to force them to give us something that we actually want. Because they're going to start getting scared of death. And that's the only thing that's going to get shit changed in this country. Like I said, nobody has to actually die. But the fear of it will force them to say, okay, we're not going to do things the way we've been doing them. And black people, like I said, if you tuck away your vote and say, I'm not going to vote until these people promise specific set asides for black people until they support things like reparations for black people instead of saying well uh, uh you know because one person said to me well you know i want reparations but i've never convinced myself i've never 
told myself that I'm a supporter candidate. Uh, I've never made it a requirement that they support reparations because I know that that's not realistic that I'm ever going to get a candidate that supports reparations. Why? Says the fucking who? Like, really? Come on, people. Let's think. Everybody else gets reparations except us. And I'm not talking about from slavery. We can talk about from right now. And we can talk about racist discriminatory policies during Jim Crow. That happened that continue to economically um, disenfranchise and, and disadvantage black people. It's not just been one thing. It's been a repetitive succession of, of racism sponsored backed and committed by the government to disenfranchise black people and there's an article called the case of four reparations and you can look it up on youtube um where tana hisi coates who kind of blasted bernie for uh not supporting reparations then turned around and said he was going to vote for him and again a lot of people feel like he's he's a puppet and i don't know if he is or not but i'm gonna say this if he is the fact that he seemed to be coming at Bernie, because a lot of people, when he wrote that article, um, hitting up Bernie for not supporting reparations, said, oh, well, he's secretly a, a Hillary supporter. And he might have been. But the fact that he's come out for Bernie, let's say that he was secretly a Hillary supporter. And that was his agenda to to uh, to to slander Bernie in order to boost Hillary support. Why is he now switching to Bernie? Because, like I said, the establishment is going to go ahead and support Bernie because they want the people to think that they actually chose the candidate. And Bernie is the anti-establishment candidate in a lot in, in a lot of people's minds. Uh, and the media is, is helping to continue to, to perpetuate him as anti-establishment by making all the establishment people come out against him. When they they're watching social media, they know that the people are aware that Ber that uh, that Bernie is or that the people feel that Bernie is anti-establishment or that they're aware of the establishment, that they're aware of the elites themselves. So why haven't they turned around and started to support Bernie? Why? Why do they continue to attack him? Like I said, my my feeling is is so that people don't start getting leery of Bernie, because if if all of a sudden the establishment comes out. And supports Bernie and all these people come out and start endorsing Bernie, you know, the president about President Obama and all these people, you know, the Congressional Black Caucus who endorsed Hillary. If they all of a sudden start supporting Bernie, people are going to say, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I thought Bernie was anti-establishment, but the establishment is behind him 100 percent. So. Oh, excuse me, it sounds like a damn train or some shit. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this video. But think about the things I said, family. Think about the things I said. Um, black people, stop voting. You don't have a choice. This is a two-party dictatorship that we're dealing with. It's a false choice. It's a placebo. Anyway. That's the video. Thanks for listening. Peace.